Okay, uh, subwoofer calibration. Um, this is subwoofer calibration, um, calibrating the subs to the best of my abilities uh, with the tools uh, that I have, um, mini DSP and even multi EQX. Um, this is really like everything I've learned over the years. Um, incredible information um, from other videos on YouTube um, and some things I do um, that are different from other people and um, even some professional um, calibrations that I've seen I'm like mm. <laughs> you know uh, it's it, I, I just know the sound that I like and um, I like bass right um, I don't have the biggest and baddest uh, subs in the world um, these are ELAC uh, sub 3030s um, 500 watt with a 1000 watt peak uh they're about eight to nine hundred dollars each so um you know not uh they're 12 inch drivers and um yeah not the biggest and baddest subs you know but um the goal really here is to um whatever subs you have is to calibrate the subs just to the absolute best of their ability right they may not be the the bleeding edge right but i want to get at just everything out of them um and i w watching a movie or listening to music i don't want them to sound stressed i don't want them to sound completely overworked so um this is something i've been working on now for a while um, i did a full calibration this way last week and um, it is the best subwoofer calibration i've ever done so um let's start there's a lot to it um so i there's a lot to it and like when i'm you know when you're making a video like this um there's bound to be something i miss so um i do apologize <laughs> if I, if there are things missed but i really hope um this is from start to finish um a subwoofer calibration time alignment uh eq re-eq almost as well um, with uh, multi EQX from a mini DSP, um, sub to main um, integration with um, phase and time alignment, plus uh, volume as well. So it's it's I'm I'm doing the entire subwoofer calibration today, from start to finish. Like this is exactly how I do it, um, and. Yeah, I mean, you'll see from the early results, like just measuring the subs, like they, the, the measurements are terrible, right? But what you can do with them in the end um, is just something, uh, it's something incredible, right? Uh, so let's get going with this. A few checks first. Um, so uh, this is Odyssey, uh, multi EQX. We primarily will not be using this, but. Um, want to make sure there's a few things in place first so um, the default measures here uh, these are all the timings for the default measures they are not included which means the response is just flat to each speaker we're not worrying about each speaker right now but um, the time the timing from Odyssey's microphone was 18.54 milliseconds um, you can change milliseconds here in the settings in the here and change everything to milliseconds so it makes it makes working with um, rew so much easier when you're working with milliseconds but there's still only so much resolution uh, odyssey has so um you know you got to pick and choose kind of where um how precise you can be unfortunately so um 1854 uh wrong one Um, speakers are small right now 1854 distance so we've just got the default uh, what Odyssey has measured as well this is a Denon receiver so I suggest putting your subwoofer channel to negative 10 and the reason is is because Denon receivers clip when they get to reference actually they clip way before reference um, I found they clip around 7.5 dB uh, on the volume scale um so i don't want any of that right and um 
I've been asking some questions about this, and apparently it doesn't do it on XLR outputs, which makes sense because RCAs can only go, uh, use two volts, and once they go past that, they're, they're just going to clip, right? Um, so the subwoofer channel is 10 dB hotter than all of the other channels. When using an RCA, it just, you know, if you're trying to reach reference uh, levels, there's just no way. Um, you have to put a negative 10 uh, on this. Um, but again, I've heard the uh, new Denon with XLRs, and XLRs in general outputs do not do this. They have four volt uh, output and they can just handle a lot more um, of this. And uh, again, I've heard they don't clip, so. But I'm taking care of this. Um, I heard from Joe, uh, Joe and Tell, that he, I think he sets his to negative six and it doesn't clip um, reference, but I'm kind of like, I just wanna, I wanna make sure, I'm just gonna put a flat negative 10 on the subwoofer channel and get that taken care of. So, um, and these are the default distances. Target curves real quick, nothing. Right, everything's flatlined. Um, subwoofer, we're only using a single out um, and then split, well, uh, yeah, split to, um, goes to mini DSP, then splits to both subs. That is the cleanest way of doing things. You don't wanna put, um, you know, the left sub in and then the, on the receiver and then the second sub in to the mini DSP and the, and there's been time alignment work done by Odyssey. They're different. They're not arriving at the same time. Then you've got to do time alignment. You don't want to do that. Just send one output to the mini DSP, um, then, um, or it, which goes into the input, then output to two subs or even four subs, however many subs you have. It's the cleanest way of doing things. Um, yeah, that's, that's, so that's that. So there's no EQ going on here. Filter design, just to go over this real quick. Um, this is what I would do, and this is what I do. So everything gets set to manual, uh, 10 hertz to 20 hertz with limit measured. Limit measured means if you import something that is beyond 20K and 10, it will still accept, uh, it, will still accept it instead of uh, limit all. Limit all is the limit here, so. Uh, but I'm not here for the main channels. Um, subwoofer channel, again, limit measured 20K, 10 Hertz. Now, obviously the subwoofer channel ends at 250 Hertz, but, um, well, typically, right, it, it, it ends there. But um, I don't want anything being applied or um, changed by Odyssey, I don't want it I don't want it doing anything, right? That's I will control that in Mini DSP. I don't want I don't want anything going on here, right? So this is why th this is maxed out 10 to 20, right? Completely maxed out uh, limit measured. Plus you have to do this for flat too. Flat is different to reference, so you need to set all of this up uh, in that way as well. Um, so uh, there we go, and it's all the same. Like everything is all the same. Actually, I should talk about this too. Um, uh, the cutoff mode for the subwoofer is disabled, which means there's no roll off whatsoever, right? There's nothing. And I do this for all the channels, but you know. Um, but the subwoofer, that's disabled. Plus, auto leveling is disabled as well, because if, if I'm applying any EQ to a sub, I don't want. Odyssey balancing anything there because it, it doesn't you can't get a proper subwoofer calibration doing that speakers it's great subwoofer no so this is this is how everything's set up notice that I'm basically turning everything uh, that Odyssey has off right <laughs> uh, you don't want anything uh, influencing um, the measurements uh, with Odyssey turned on nothing so um uh, yeah, negative 10, okay, good. Um, and we're gonna send that to the receiver, right? So um, this is the equivalent of turning Odyssey off. This is exactly what this is. This is exactly what I'm sending to Odyssey. But one thing good actually, um, 
or interesting is um, sending this to Odyssey and having Odyssey on forces everything to be in a 24-bit 48 system, which we are anyway, but you know, um, you're guaranteed that now. So, um, and I may as well talk about this too. So everything, make sure everything um, on your PC um, is set up properly. So um, I'm using Dolby Atmos, um, I'm, don't, don't worry about that. Um, typically though, you would choose 24-bit um, 48 because that's what you want to output. It's exactly the same as movies, so you're calibrating in this entire system. But you want to you want to have exclusive uh, modes here uh, for the Denon or, or a receiver, so you can send 0.1 signals through seven up to 7.1. Unfortunately, we still can't do Atmos yet, but you can do Atmos sweeps. Um, is there anything else? Uh, I guess configure. Um, you know, we don't, again, we don't need, um, we don't need that Atmos, uh, setting, so, uh, uh, let's just include everything. Uh, we full range, we don't want windows, you know, I know we're not doing other speakers and things, but we want complete full range, no roll-offs, no, no nothing, right? Um, finish. Um, I guess that changed the Dolby Atmos. Uh, I'm still on it, but um, it doesn't matter. I mean, uh, I'm just going to, just for peace of mind, 24-bit 48, right? Um, we'll set that. But uh, I don't believe it goes over that, so. Uh, recording. So um, I'm using a mini DSP, um, sorry, a uh, U mic 2, and um, okay, I thought I went over this, uh, but I disable all of these. Um, four. Oh, that's a mini DSP. Yeah, all right, so, you know, mistakes were made. <laughs> um, so where are we? Yeah, here we are. I was gonna say, it looked different to me. I was like, uh, what's happening? Uh, I've got a lot of things plugged in here for doing this, so it's like, yeah. Uh, yeah, enhancements all off, and uh, yeah, that's better. Uh, two channel, 24-bit 48. So again, every this entire system is 24-bit 48. Uh, and we're making sure of that. So uh, you can even check um, on the mini DSP thing here. Um, you might too. 48. Two channel, 24 bit 48. This is exactly what we want. So we're in this entire ecosystem right now of 24 bit 48. And we're just making sure of this. Um, and that's all been sent. The distances have been, um, are the default distances um, that Odyssey measured, um, which is fine for now, and we'll 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 get into that later. Um, so um, no smoothing, um, and I don't uh, decimate uh, IR, which reduces sample rate or any potential for reducing sample rate. But I just learned. Um, like with uh, OCA's video, Obsessive uh, Compulsive Audio Files, that uh, I file, uh, YouTube channel, that, you know, just, if you don't want any of this going on anyway, um, you can measure subwoofers in uh, full, as full range, right? You can measure from zero to 24K. And yes, it's a subwoofer, but it, it the measurement is, um, um, and when you export it, it's, the measurement is a, as it should be. Um, so, um, and th this is just how I set the, this up. Um, we're going to be using 90 degree. Denon exclusive drivers, so we have uh, 7.1 channels now. Um, timing reference is always my center speaker now. Um, that's it. It's always the same. You mic two. 
exclusive as well. And I think we're pretty much ready to go. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, so the mini DSP, um, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know if, how many people are like have kind of jumped onto this, uh, this new interface. Um, I had to like kind of figure out like what's going on uh, with it all first. Um, but this is basically how, uh, in a default way that I've set everything up. Any channel that doesn't get used gets muted. Um, my input two is not muted because I'm only using a one out from the receiver. So that gets muted. Um, both of these channels get linked for everything I do. So you come up to the menu here and their output one is linked to output two. Um, I do the same here, but um, again, I'm not using those uh, channels, uh, so it doesn't actually matter. Same with the crossovers, everything's linked. Um, you know, they're all linked. Um, what I do here um, is set the crossover here because I don't want to see it on this bar, right? When I'm, when I'm doing crossover work on the sub, I only want to see the two channels, output one and output two. So I just like, like arbitrarily just put them some way random at what 1000 hertz here, just so they're out of the way. I want to see exactly what's going on on here first. Um, but none of the crossovers are on, the delays zero, there's no gains, we're not inverted, um, compressors aren't turned on. Um, I've disabled all of the uh, um, basic modes and advanced modes, or, or, or the potential EQ is turned off here. Uh, this is highlighted still, but it's only because they're they're enabled, right? They're they're ready to be imported too, uh, but we're flatlined here as well on the mini DSP. So there's no there's no actual files or anything uh, being applied there. So um, gains are zero, uh, the master volume zero, and we are analog uh, RCAs. So um, this is this is all set up. Um, and again, the uh, input one is going to output one and output two. So it's just splitting. Um, it's taking that signal from the receiver and just putting it into the same uh, outputs from input one. So um, yeah, I think we're ready to go. I think that's just a, a quick early, uh, like quick explanation, I guess. Um, of how, you know, how everything needs to be set up before we even start. Um, all right, volumes, uh, real quick. Uh, well, let's see. I just want to get an idea of uh, volumes and what's going on. So, um, full range, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, we could do center, that's fine. Should I do that? Left. Okay, the speaker level is at 75 dB now. Let's see what the sub's at. Um, so, um, sub. Okay, uh, I need to bring those subs down. Okay, I didn't lower the volume on the subs uh, after resetting everything, so um, let's bring them down. Uh, the ELAC has the phone app, so you can just lower the volume on these. Uh, had a sub disconnect, so yeah, you, you know, <laughs> you just got to deal with this. Uh, all right, here we go. So, um... Some erratic volume changing going on here. Um, this, I don't know. It's either one of the subs or the actual app. So uh, let's look now. It's good. I like to calibrate my speaker, my subs at eighty. 
six eighty five dB. Um, seventy five dB is too low. I found. Um, it's just not. There's not enough energy uh, from the speaker. So um, uh, pretty interesting. Again, it's ten dB louder than uh, than the mains, which is uh, what it should be. I like eighty six because when you um, only measure one speaker, it should be eighty because uh, there should be uh, there should be a six dB uh, increase. So uh, all right, everything's set up. Uh, that's how uh, that's how we set things up. Um, so. Uh, 0 to 24 hertz, um, but we're going to do quick sweeps here, and the reason is is because when you're doing time alignment, um, it is better to do quick sweeps. However, um, when I'm doing the actual calibration, I'm going to use uh, 21 second uh, sweeps, uh, even for this video. Because um, this is going, the reason I'm doing it here as well, and not in like my typical seat, is I'm going to kill two birds with one stone here. I'm I'm going to make the vid video and it's going to be my real calibration. So I, this is why I don't want the, I don't want any corners cut or anything like that. This is exactly how I do my calibration, and this calibration is going to be the calibration I'm going to use. So um, you know uh, if there's silences like when i'm measuring here for 21 seconds then yeah, i just thought you know that's just the way it is um because this is a you know a full calibration then you can see everything um okay so let's get measuring um let's mute the right sub and get going so check levels 81, okay. Okay. Uh, L, yeah, that's fine. L, uh, bad, right? You know, it's, uh, it's not good. Not good, um, but you can still get incredible sound. Uh, muted, yeah, with some calibration. Check. Hmm, lower. Let me check the volume on that, because um, that was 2 dB. Okay, um, but I will check it. Okay, they're both the same. I don't make sure um, the left and the right subs measure the same in the MLP, and the reason is, is because Chances are there will be differences in the room. Uh, one side of the room, there is a, a, a wall, and this side of the room are where the doors are, right? So there's a door going to a closet uh, where the right sub is. Uh, there's a door here for the bathroom. And there are, you know, just, there, there's, there's gonna be minor differences there. But what I need to know is that the subs are set to the same volume output uh, near field that they're actually outputting the same volume which they are right um, that's that's what I care about and then we'll combine everything later and that's that's the way I think it, it's best okay 1 dB Ah, uh, okay, now, well, these need time aligning, so, um, <clears throat> uh, go to time alignment tool right here, and, uh, okay, this is new, uh, I see traces, um, never, oh, okay, 
Yeah, I see this. Um, never really seen this before. Uh, doesn't matter. So, um, yeah, I've been learning um, some about um, what is happening uh, with uh, the response. Uh, do you use phase alignment? Do you use uh, impulse uh, alignment and things like that? Um, what I've found to be the best is um, is actually almost not looking at this, right? The actual response. Um, you should be able to tell how good the response is from looking at these um, phase traces. Now, um, I watched a video um, uh, by Home Theatre Gamer, uh, Brad, I think it is, and... Um, he was showing a, the vi a video about um, what uh, beta uh, versions offer for REW, and I was just like, "Okay, I'll, let me let me check this out." And um, he was say he said about uh, show uh, a lot of people don't do this, but show phase traces. And the moment he said that, I was like, "Oh, <laughs> you know," it just clicked. I was like, "Oh, so." Uh, when you see the phase traces, um, that it is the highest volume peak, essentially, right? That's that's what it will give you. So, for example, if the phase, uh, see, look look at the look at me doing this. Uh, I don't even need to see this. I know this is bad because the phase traces are are not aligned. They're not aligned in any way. Uh, it's going to result in a bad sound but it also shows you up here, right? It's not working. This is not working at all. Everything's misaligned. So, um, so um, we're, we're relatively close here, right? Uh, this is 100 hertz. This is 80. Pretty good, like, right? We're actually pretty good, but I haven't put any distances in the Mini DSP. They're just pretty much equal distance apart. So they should be relatively close anyway. Right, so um, yeah. Um, now, whether you use impulse alignment or phase is debatable. Um, I found that phase is actually better for subwoofer calibration, um, and I'll say that kind of lightly. Um, I'm still dabbling with what the best method is for the speakers themselves, um, but um, I think it's phase um, and one of the things here is where you place your cursor is important. It will change the response that you actually get. Now, um, one thing I've been thinking about as well is what is important to you and what should you chase? So if you align um, phase at cursor here at 70 hertz, uh, you are you are leaning now towards this side of the um, response, right? You're leaning this way. Um, John, uh, the maker of REW, um, as I don't know if these are new tool tips, but I don't think I had them uh, before. Um, it's one octave either way, right? So if you pick uh, 50. That will be up to 100 hertz and 25. So that's a pretty good uh, place, um, I think, for everybody to do. And the reason is, is because the phase uh, traces, look down here, past 20 hertz, it gets relatively ugly anyway, right? Do not, I would never optimize for this because, um, well, one, you don't hear it. Um, and it's just, you, it's not going to work. So example, let's just uh, optimize for 30 hertz, right? Because 30 hertz is where all of the slam comes in movers, right? So I want to, I want to, you know, optimize for that. Look what happens. Look, look what's starting to happen though to the response here. Phase traces are misaligned uh, and they're, it's showing here, right? So you can correlate this to this easily. This is why I have um, I don't just rely on this. I, I rely on both, but you know, you need you need to know both, right? You just have to know both. So optimizing for thirty hertz is a mistake. It's a complete mistake um, because 
Yeah, you, you might gain uh, 0 0.3 dB here, but you're losing just... It's just... You're losing too much here. Now, I don't mind losing a little here. Uh, some here, right? In the 80 hurt to 120 hurt uh, region to gain a little here. And this is what I think I'm going to do today. Today, I'm going to optimize more for... Uh, well, I, I, I'm going to use 40. 40, uh, again, with the octaves, would optimize... Uh, see, it says here as well, align phase um, at cursor. It doesn't align it to just this area. It's within the octaves, right? So 40 would be as well as everything up to 80 hertz and then down to 20, right? Um, it, that's what it would optimize for. And because um, I, I thought, well, why? If I, you know, phase align here, why? Because I, I did it here and things like that, and I did it, I've done it here before. But let's just do it here. So the, what is this? Um, 90 something hertz. So this should just be a flat line, right? It's not. And it's because um, it's, it's optimizing over a range, which is why this is incredibly important, where you, where you actually optimize to. So um, now, if you've up, now we've optimized for, say, 90 hertz. But now the now the uh, 30 hurt here is actually starting to suffer. So there is a balance to this to be had, and you know it, it depends what you want to optimize for. Think of this as a tilt, right? Do you want to do you want to optimize for ultra deep bass, like right, or do you want to optimize for? the crossover region at 80 hertz and you know but you do lose output at the at the bottom end so um but picking to a cent generally central area 50 hertz is never wrong it may be the best look at the alignment here as well that you actually get this is um probably around yeah around 120 hertz we're slightly misaligned here, but then we come into absolute full alignment. It's tracking really, really nice. And we just fall coming into the 30s and, you know, that is the way it is. But again, if you optimize for 30, the whole response uh, falls apart. So, yeah, sure, we're losing, right? If these traces are showing the original response, we are actually losing slight performance here. But we're outside of the, 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 the measurement of the sub anyway, right? We don't, I don't care about this. I only care up to 120 hertz anyway. And even 120 hertz, I, you know, I, it's really in that range of 80 hertz to 30 is what I really want to be optimizing for. So um, if this won't align absolutely perfectly, then, you know, so be it. So what you can do uh, is this. So, um... Uh, and you you can make judgments right now on which which is actually the best. So um, I will try and get as close to okay forty. So a line phase at forty. Right, we st we do start to sl uh, we, there is some misalignment here, right? But we are we're optimizing a bit further into this area now, right? And uh, you can align some and just say uh, 40, right? Uh, we could do a 50. Can I get 50? Yep, a line, a line there. Now, as you can see, 50, 50 really does align everything perfectly up to like 40, uh, 37. So it, it, generally speaking, it might be the safest way to go here. Um, yeah, we just did it. Uh, align some. 50. And we'll do a 60. Okay. Exact 60. Exact 60 is actually starting to misalign uh, here. So from that point of view, um, you know, we thought, hey, optimizing further up 
would give us better results. It actually doesn't. Uh, 50 hertz was better performance than um, than, 50, than 60. Uh, align sum. Now, these are small differences, right? But again, what do you want to optimize for? So, um, they're not showing. Is that a change? Um, so... All right, he, these are the differences in the responses. So uh, 40, yeah, sure, we're up because we're optimizing for this air, this this area now, right? Uh, we are going to suffer. This this is just a compromise, right? But again, um, we're we're losing performance anyway. We're rolling off on the receiver uh, from 180 hertz crossover and the LFE, um, the LFE channel. Um, I, I just want to interject here as well. Uh, currently, my receiver is set to 120 hertz on the LFE channel, right? The low pass filter for LFE. Um, do I have an image of it? Uh, just to... I wonder if it's on YouTube. Yeah, it might be. Um, images. Uh, yeah. Okay. So my currently my low pass filter for LFE is set to 120 hertz. It will not be later on. But the reason it is still in 120 hertz is because I want to adjust phase and alignment where this will be on. Um, because any time you make attenuation changes um, with EQ or a receiver, the phase alignment is going to change, right? So you want to, if you're doing phase work, you want to make sure that everything that will be turned on, um, like this 120 hertz filter, will be turned on. Um, you don't want to set this to 250 hertz yet, right? Um, I will be setting it to 250 hertz, but you don't want to do it yet. So, um, okay, uh, did I did forget about that. All right, so back to this. Um, now you you need to judge now what is actually is the best. So um, what I do is yes, you can see in the response here, but the best thing to do is to start looking at numbers, right? Looking at numbers here. What is actually the best performance? So blue looks to me as though it's the highest at 30. Well, this is 26 hertz, right? So blue is um, 90 dB, 90.9. Uh, 60 hertz was uh, 90.6 and 50 was 90.7. Okay, so we've gained um, 0.3 dB by just putting the align cursor in different positions, right? So we're optimizing for different uh, spots and places here. Blue, highest at this, uh, this problem area as well, which is, you know, something to think about. Uh, 78.8, um, 79.9, so wait, whoa, 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 um, one, uh, that's 0.9, that's point, that's, that's one dB, that's one dB's difference in a strong, now we're getting into strong sub base area, right, from 50, 60 to 50 hertz down, we're actually getting into strong, uh, base there. Uh, this this nasty problem we've got going on here. Um, so again, I'm optimizing for 40 hertz, 74.1, um, and 60 is 73.2, but 50 is 73.5. So 50 is across the board. 50 was always doing better, even up to this point. But 40 so far is, is actually doing the best. Uh, the difference is now only 0.3. So we're getting to a point now where the optimization of 40 is starting to lose its um, alignment. I guess, yeah, that's the best way to put it. Again, this, this is just the way, you know, it's working. Um, now... So you can tell here the blue one is the lowest. So um, 74.6, uh, 60 has 95.1, but 50 
as 95. So again, they're close, but 50 gave better performance here as well. So we're just, if you wanted to use 50, we're just not losing. You're not losing anything really in point one. You know, you haven't lost anything. So where does, where does it all start to, so we get to 100 Hertz and uh, 84.8, 84.9. Uh, 50 has gone to 85. So this is a 0.2 difference here, right? Up to 100 hertz, right? The crossover is at 80. Yeah, there's a roll off into 120. Um, but you have to say to yourself, is this, is, this, uh, is this worth fighting for, you know, this, this part now? I don't think it is, right? I just do not think that it's worth, worth that to gain performance where it really matters here right so um 90 point we get yeah it's point three but you know it's in a that's deep base right 25 hertz that's deep 26 hertz. that's deep base um and everywhere else is better definitely up until uh, around 80 80 we start to fall, we start to fall there so um, you can do this with the impulse aligning as well. Uh, let's show it. Um, and again, uh, so impulse alignment though is um, much tighter. It's not. It's not uh, the uh, an octave either way. It's like one third, um, from my understanding. So. Um, if I align to 30, then, you know, this, this, I would say this is going to fall because um, it's optimized much more for a, a, a fine area. I even have polarity uh, issues. Like, look at, look at this. This is dropped. You know, it's just, that's a reset for me. So 40 align. And we have polarity issues as well. Uh, it's just, you know, this is not, that's that's not something I want to do, right? Um, so let's just try 80, right? Okay. So 80 is actually similar to. Yeah, we we see we we're actually losing performance here though as well. Um, it, again, if these lines are representing that. So. Yeah, I, I'm I'm optimizing for the response, but I'm I'm seeing it in a phase in a phase way, and I think I think phase alignment is better. So um, let's reset uh, forty. And I think I think that is I think that is the best. So a delay of one point nine, right? Align some. Uh, that's it. So uh, 50 is gone. Uh, 60 is gone. And were they the same? They're exactly the same. Yeah. I mean, they should be, right? Um, so, uh, yeah. So, um, delay of 1.79. Let me double check that. Uh, yeah, so... Um, yeah, just I am just double checking, right? Um, so this is a delay now of 1.79. So um, this is not a negative number, um, obviously, but um, I if you do t some time alignment in um, Odyssey, it can be the other way around. So if it said um, a delay of 1.76 or uh, whatever this is, 1.79, it may be negative. Actually, it will be negative with Odyssey. So, uh, okay, so yeah, 1.79. So we put a delay in on the right sub, uh, 1.79. Okay, so let's unmute these now. This should be the response we get. Subs have fell asleep. P 
perfect. We, I mean, we've actually gained performance there. 90, I've gained, uh, that would be one, so 0 0.6. 74, 0.7, okay. Um, I've actually gained more performance than the uh, REW has actually predicted here. So, um, uh, sorry, <sighs> just trying to get comfortable. That to me is time aligned. That, to me, yeah, sure, we've got this to take care of and things like that. Uh, but that is optim that's an optimized response now, in my opinion, right? That's as optimized it could be. You could pick 50. It would allow, um, you know, definitely up to 120 hertz. Uh, it's, again, a tilt. Uh, you would lose performance here, but you, you gain it on this side, right? You know, so um, there is, again, a balance to this. But I th I'm chasing this this area, right? A little more, right? Without without losing performance too much here. So uh, time aligned. Okay, so that's done. So uh, time aligned. Uh, so, so right, we we have now got uh, the speakers time aligned uh, to the best of my ability. Um, again, you can you can impulse response uh, align. I have now found, I, I've done it before, um, but again, it's not optimal, it's, it's just when, when a response is heard from the left and the right sub, that doesn't mean you're going to get the best performance though, right? Things are timing at the same, but again, you've got the phase thing going on as well. You're not going to be aligned everywhere. It's, you, you're just not going to be aligned everywhere. And if, if, if I didn't have any doors, if you didn't have any doors in a room, which would be weird, uh, but, or, or maybe the door was at the very back center, everything was absolutely symmetrical, maybe, right? You could impulse a line and the phase traces would, would match just everywhere, you know, but, you know, I don't know any of us that have got absolutely perfect rooms. You know, this room is a dedicated movie room. But um, even so, you know, it, it's a house. You know, it's, um, uh, it's not a, a studio absolutely 100% designed for home theater, right? It, it isn't. It's just a, a room that, that actually works. It's got a good shape. You know, it does work. But, um, you know, some of the things I, I, I can't help here, you know, there's a door here, there's a door here for a bathroom. It's just, you know, that's just living, you know, that's just the, the way it is. So these are things that you have to deal with. And um, where was I going with this? Yeah, t time alignment uh, uh, and uh, impulse and things like that. I'm doing what is the best response and I'm also doing what is the best um, phase alignment over a specific area. Right, that's why I think it's really nice to to do this. So, that's the best response that I think I could get. And we are time aligned now. Now we take a real measurement, right? Okay, now we do one M's. I am gonna remain silent for this. Um, I could cut, you know, each part. Out. I look. <clears throat> I just again, I want to give a full calibration. This is just the way it is, right? So there will be silence for 21.8 seconds. Um, so 1M gives exceptional resolution. Um, anything above this, uh, I've found is just, it's just really overkill, um, right? Um, some people might say, you know, even 1M is, is overkill, but uh, for me, 1M, um, I do the same on all the speakers too. It provides really nice detail and, um, uh, so that's it. Um, but yeah, I, I'm going to be silent for this.
Okay. 120 hertz. We had to remember that as well. I just thought while we was doing this. So, um, <clears throat> so this this is our 120 hertz measurement. So that's with the receiver rolling off as well. Now, so what we can do with this is uh, now we will get into the uh, already we can find out what our target curve should be, right? So uh, how I do this is uh, SPL align. We can use zero dB. It doesn't matter. But 0 dB is, is um, a way of seeing things in a clear way, right? a concise way um, for anyone that is, it's just an easier way to, to see things. Um, it is volume normalized as well. So again, it's super easy to see. I align at 50 Hertz. I think that is the best uh, center alignment for a subwoofer and I use one octave, not two. Uh, two is too wide, which it, it encompasses too much of the measurement. It isn't where I, th I think it should be. <clears throat> I found that one octave for a subwoofer and you center uh, to 50 is exactly uh, the room curve and the response that you, you, are, you are seeing. So uh, let's do this. So, uh, okay, so we're on the zero dB line, right? So now we can see um, what's going on, right? We can see what, what's, uh, what the room curve is uh, versus the, the zero dB line. So room curve, easy. Uh, let's find the highest point. So uh, this is it down here, 120 hertz. Um, the highest peak is 7.4. Seven. All right, we're coming down. Seven point four. Uh, Seven point four room curve. Just in case I forget. To be f honest, I could just put it in here now. In Mini DSP. Seven point four. It's not enabled, um, but it is in. Um, okay. So that's written down. It's written down here. Uh, so that is a 7.4 dB room curve, right? Why? Because our speaker is showing that this, there's some issues going on here, sure, right? But this, this is what's happening. This is what's happening to the sub response and then it's coming down, right? If I put in room curves that are lower than this, like say a 4 dB, uh, rise that's not the response of these speakers and it's not the response of these speakers in this room in this room size right yours is going to be different so you may time align measure yours and it was 6.8 then you put 6.8 into mini dsp or in um you can do this in uh, multi eqx um either way whatever, whatever system you're actually using that to me is the room curve right so when you play movies with that understanding, with that is the curve and rays that the room is giving you to these subs um, and the subs themselves. So that's what's going on with the room. You put that in, that's when you get a completely natural sounding bass from your subs. It sounds absolutely incredible. Um, you are not under bass and you are not over bass. That is it. Um, this is the, in my opinion, I've seen a lot of people, a lot of videos, um, you know, what room curve should I use? That's it. So there is not one room curve that is gonna be for everybody. You're, you're gonna have to measure yours and you're gonna have to find out what yours is, right? When time aligned, what is yours? Uh, mine is 7.4 dB, right? That means I need to I'm going to EQ to flat in a minute and I need to know that what after the EQ and after everything is done, I want to put everything back in that I've taken away. So um, I think that is the best way to calibrate a subwoofer as well. There is some, obviously there's some debate about this. Hey, I like to calibrate the sub without bringing things flat and then putting it back in. Um, I've done this for years. 
and um, it's just easier. You make a calibration mistake, right? You have to calibrate the entire thing again. So what's the most important thing about a subwoofer calibration? Number one is it's time aligned. We've done there. We will calibrate to flat, right? And if you're very happy with that flat calibration, the only thing left now is the room curve. And you can, let's just say you did make a mistake with the room curve uh, measurement. Um, like I said, you're gonna have to do it all over again, but you don't have to do that uh, with this way. Uh, plus when you, uh, after you finish calibrating and you are on 250 hertz, you put the 120 hertz filter back in, it rolls off absolutely perfect. You don't have to use any complicated math or, you know, get into the EQ section and start designing room curves or anything like that. You don't have to do any of that. So um, that's, why, that's why I will do EQ to flat like I'll show you here. So undo the SPL alignment, we know, we know what the room curve is now, right? We know what the base rise is of these subs in this room. So uh, next, that's actually EQ. Um, this is 120 hertz. Ooh, good job I caught that. Um, so now we go to the receiver. You go on a den and you go to speakers, manual setup, you go to bass and LF, uh, low pass filter for LFE, 120 hertz. Gets set to 250 hertz. What does that mean? There's no filter applied right here, right? The response is going to be, uh, from this, but this is 80 hertz, right? So this is, this, this is gonna like come here because the filter's not applied. So, um, um, yeah, I didn't, need to do the 120 hertz but um, when I look back at files it's nice to have oh this is what the 120 hertz measurement was this is what to you know when I because I do go over my files and my calibrations like okay this is what I was doing and uh, this is what it was okay another measurement Okay, so that's the filter. So, um, just want to check something. Uh, no mutes? Oh, yeah. I was <laughs> just checking. Just checking that no channels are muted. Yeah, so this is what that roll off uh, is doing, and uh, it needs to be in place. Uh, when the calibration's finished, it needs to be in place because uh, you, you, you're going to be able to hear this. Going to be at a localized uh, base uh, with base uh, rising this high. So uh, this is um, 250 hertz, and this is what we're going to calibrate now. So. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. Okay, mini DSP. Um, doesn't matter. Don't need a room curve. Um, 21 to, uh, where is this? 170? Okay. Um, let's do this instead. Yeah, let's do that. 172. 21, that looks good to me. Um, some might say as well, uh, why you EQ in to say 100 and, well, I've got it set to 172. Um, I don't want to like say, bring this down to flat, right? Say it to just, let's just say it was 80 or 90 Hertz. And then this rose, right? This is rising. I don't want that because it's not, it's not going to roll off properly then. It's going to roll off in a raised volume. So I, I want to make sure this is all as flat as can be. So when I put curves back in, 120 and um, any room 
uh, house curves I put in, it, it, everything's just rolling off as it should be. So, um, does it require more compute power to do that? It doesn't. It, it doesn't at all. Um, so, it's just not something I worry about. Um, so, target. Okay, so real quick, um, target. What's the lowest point here? 68.3. So, 75.2. So, set the target to 75.2. Okay, which we're done. Now, I don't need to see this. Uh, now, I really just need to see predicted. Don't really need to see the target either, the target level now. So, what am I after here now? Let's get this out of the way. Um, what do I actually care about? Uh, give me the best response, right? That's it. That's now all I care about. Um, so I always start at the lowest point and then see when... So this dip, um, there's an influence uh, happening. So these have to be brought down. These have to be brought down, but... Q filters, PEQ filters are not brick walls. So they're also bringing this down as well. So uh, you need like a, an inverted boost to to bring this back up. And there is going to be boosting there, right? Um, and I found that, yes, there is going to be boosting. But when you sweep your speakers, your subs, do you actually hear that? You don't. You don't hear it and it's because it is um it will just be an eq to counter this whole thing on both sides uh being brought down as well so um we need to find this point so um yes this is boring and i literally go up point one at a time but you know when you've got the response uh that you need so uh that's actually not bad um, and I only say that because of what else I can do in say mini DSP. Um, it's not bad. I'm going to, um, copy the target on that one, 75.3. That's the first good one I've seen, right? Um, keep going. I want the best though. I want mini DSP to do all the, the heavy lifting and then any issues any issues we'll fix with a uh, multi EQX. So, um, yeah. Oh, this seat is not comfortable. Okay. Uh, okay. Not good. Excuse me. Now, how much uh, do I have to go up here? Maybe a DB, right? Um, not bad, not bad, right? Um, that that could be better than seventy-five point three, and again, I can clean this up, so don't worry about this. Uh, these are a little, sh these might be a little too um, too detailed uh, for me to actually correct, but this is correctable easily, so um, definitely don't worry about that. Um, let's just keep going and see uh, what we can do here. Okay. Um, this isn't looking good either. I mean, I'm still, w you know, I still would like this to look better. Um, okay. I hope this doesn't take half an hour, but, um, you know, this is, again, just uh, for me finding the best response first. Okay. Th this is good, right? This is this is reasonable here. This is all reasonable. Then it just gets, like, really sloppy here, which is uh, a little disappointing. Um... Let's 
So we're at 76 now. That's not bad. All right. Um, there's some things going on here. Um, this is correctable. Um, that's actually not bad, to be honest. Um, Oh, no, sorry. Uh, 76.0. And uh, what was the other one? 75.6 70, was another one. That was good or decent. Okay. Yeah, it's, um, it's getting this right. I wonder if I could just correct for this whole thing in uh, multi-EQX, because this is not bad, right? This is good. So um, I'm just going to keep going. Maybe go to 77. Okay. Yeah, I I don't believe in just um, setting a target level and um, hey, that's 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 it, right? Like if I let's just say I set the target level to be seventy six point three and this is what I had, no, you know you've you've got to find the flattest calibration uh, that you possibly can. Uh, this with this method, right? And um, yeah. Okay, so we get, we're getting a few of these, right, where um, this is good, but this needs uh, correcting. It's not using all 10 filters, which um, it could do, right? So um, there is another filter left. So I could manually add one myself to pick the this Ford he hurt area up. Okay, so we're... Um, yeah, we're not really going, we're not getting much better here. So, uh, yeah. See, I like this, but this is a shame. I wish, uh, wish we could get that better. So yeah, let's just go up to 77 and then maybe just really quick check um, a few more above and see how um, how we're doing, generally speaking. Now, yes, we're bringing the levels down. Um, <clears throat> but um, the levels I put back in on the subs, uh, that volume loss. So we're having a volume loss of 10 dB on the receiver. And uh, Mini DSP is putting in negative, a lot of negative EQ here as well. So you are so far away from clipping. Um, you are really far away. All right. So um, let's get to 77. But yeah, you put the volume back in on the subs. Um, there, there will be a 7.8 um, D 7.4. Uh, DB house curve anyway. All right, so we've got to 77, and to be honest, uh, the ones that we had written down here and the one I had copy and pasted is, um, they were probably the best, but let's do some real quick snapshots. So 78. Let's just quickly see now. Is there anything else we can work with here, or is it just falling apart? Um, is it not giving us anything? Hmm. Not good for me. Uh, 79. Okay. 80. Ooh. Ooh. I like it. I love it. 
that's a nice that's that's great if i can get anywhere close to those results um that would be awesome once you get into the 100 hertz and this i don't mind this because again it's not really an important region um this this is getting this right is uh is the is the the, the issue it's actually used 10 filters as well so which is interesting i'm gonna go with that i really like that i mean could i play around and find one that is like half a db better i mean maybe but when it's that when it's that spot on and you'll see in a minute right why i say that is um because any like even this correction here right uh, or this over or under correction you could say and maybe here i can correct with mini um with the multi eqx so as well so i realized that you can use mini dsp and multi eqx in conjunction with each other and uh you can get an even better response now i guess in theory you could um yeah, I wouldn't necessarily re-EQ this and then put it into REW on the input side, but um, hmm. maybe. Uh, so save coefficients to file. I think it's this one. If it isn't, it'll be it'll be that one. Um, so new calibration. Um, mini. DSP Cal. Yep. Uh, yeah, if it isn't that file. So, uh, PEQs. Uh, menu. Load by quads. Uh, I don't know what is going on there. New calibration. Mini DSP Cal. Okay. Okay, great. This is what it's doing. Okay. Let's just see how it measures. Now look, there are some boosts in there. I get it. But a lot of the boosts are to counter the negatives as well. The way it's surrounding um, PEQ uh, Q levels. Uh, it's just a counter to it. Um... levels will be lower let me just give this a measure without increasing the volume for now What actually is this? Uh, 250 hertz flat. Let's just call it that for now. Okay, so um, is that the calibration over? No, it's not. Is it, if there's any improvements that can be made, we're going to try them. Try to do it now with um, multi EQX. Now I've noticed with uh, multi EQX, it doesn't have the resolution that a mini DSP has, so it may not be much different. You, I might be able to correct for this. Uh, I might be able to correct for this and this and balance that. Uh, this should be, I should have the ability to pull this down. Um, maybe this as well. Um, now if, I, I don't know how to do this, but if there was a way of importing a text file to mini DSP, as well as having the calibration, uh, please let me know. Uh, because this is why I split the calibrations up into a mini DSP calibration and then a this is what I now need to do on multi EQX. So, all right, so what we have to do here <clears throat> is go to EQ and generate measurement from target shape, which is flat, right? Uh, where is it? Uh, 
Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Right. Oh, it's there. Right. So the target is flat. Um, and what we'll do then is uh, SPL align. What's on screen? Yeah. Okay. So everything is uh, normalized to flat. So um, this is a uh, inverted. This will be an inverted target curve to now import to uh, multi EQX. Uh, this was a method I learned from OCA, Obsessive Compulsive Audio File. And yes, you can you can do this with uh, the subwoofer as well. The reason I EQ first is because uh, with say a mini DSP is look look how close we are. Like this is close. But let's see now if there's any cleanup work we can actually do with it. If you uh, invert a subwoofer's response right away, I've done it. It doesn't. It doesn't look good. And and um, Odyssey doesn't have the resolution to take care of this either. So here's something else to to think about when you when you import target here. Um, the frequencies are at least one twelfth octave apart, with three hertz apart within the range of uh 10 hertz to 20k right what this means is that at the high end from say a thousand uh, hertz to 24,000, some of the changes you can make are really like you can get super detailed with it because they're far away right 1000 is far away from uh 2000 it's really really far away but the thing is we're dealing with 30 hertz to 100 hertz so think about this think about the detail required um to get 1000 hertz to 1100 hertz that's beyond uh, it, it's it's insane to think about and, but that's what we have here yeah, this is a tiny tiny area this 30 hertz to 100 hertz, it's so small in that respect. And you need ultra high resolution to be able to EQ this so well. Um, this again is why Mini DSP has much higher Q resolution than um, Odyssey. Um, and I would think most um, room correction software. This is why I went back to the Mini DSP is because it can't be matched. Um, maybe these ultra high end receivers have that much Q and detail resolution and things like that. But then you would have to do it on the receiver. Uh, I, I, do, I don't know. So again, I'm just saying the amount of detail here, at, but, but what can, what can we correct for? So, um, trace arithmetic here. Okay. Let's not get lost here. So, um, Target flat over 250 hertz flat. All right. Uh, A over B magnitude generate. Okay. What this has done is it is inverted everything we are missing uh, compared to zero dB, right? This is the zero dB line. And now everything that is missing. So, again, resolution aside, uh, if you had infinite resolution here, you, I would put this in, this uh, correction curve, and what I would measure is a complete flat line. Unfortunately, we don't get that. Um, now, there's a couple of things here I need to take care of. So, um, first, let's um, export as text. No smoothing. Um, Oh, right. Use resolution of measurement. 0 0.3. I... Is that... That's probably why my imports um, have different numbers. Um, typically, this uses 96 for full range uh, measurements. I wonder if I should change it. Uh, yeah, I... <laughs> I don't want to waste people's time and play around with this, but um, let's just do this for now. So um, if that is a mini DSP cal, 
this would be a multi multi uh, EQ X cal. Um, yeah, let's do that then for now. Now we have to correct. Obviously, it is correcting for the losses here, right? Because we are we've inverted. It will correct for some of this here as well, which we we don't want to do. Where would I want to go to? So um, again, let's look at numbers here. So um, <clears throat> we're actually boosting here by uh, f plus four, uh, point 0.4. When are we actually flat? 23.54. Uh, new calibration. OK. I, uh, I cut some of the spreadsheets uh, stuff out there because uh, I was getting lost myself and uh, I just had to take a break and um, uh, fix all the spreadsheet stuff, you know, just relax for a bit. All right, we're back. So uh, I was getting attacked by my own spreadsheets right there. <laughs> I'm not a spreadsheet guy. But like, I got it fixed, and uh, yeah, we're back now. So uh, yeah, I do apologize about that. Uh, I'm not sure where I'll cut this, but uh, obviously you'd be seeing on the video where where I've cut this. Um, so look, where were we, or oh, where did where did I think we get to? So um, it zeroes out at 24.53, right? That's where uh, the correction curve here starts to now increase and take over because the response is actually falling, right? So what I want to do now is uh, make all the correction curves up until the uh, corrections up until this point, then just allow the sub to drop off naturally, right? So 24.53 or closest there, there to uh, 24.35, as you can see here, it's starting to boost, right? This is starting to boost, and even at 21 hertz, here, it's 7 dB, so it's it scales out of hand extremely quickly. Um, so uh, what we would do here is 2435. Uh, look for 24. Where are we? Where are we? There we go. 2435. Same thing as a uh, that I was doing with speakers. Is you do this to the sub. If you've seen my other videos, and this just gets to, to zero. So again, zero, zero in Odyssey means no EQ. Um, and now what we do is we figure out where and what's going on here. So yeah, I was getting a little lost here as well. Like, where should I stop? Um, 127, we're outside of uh, the range of, you know, the subwoofer at this point, round down to 120 hertz. This, isn't, this is not a big deal to correct for. Uh, any of this. So if, if this is like still sticking up or anything like that, it doesn't matter. Um, but, you know, we could try. We could, if, if we really wanted to. Um, let's see what's happening at around 164. So, uh, let's see. So we're negative, uh, positive, negative, where does this where does this happen? This this uh Oh yeah, all right, now we now the speaker's lost. Okay. That's all negative up to there. 17706. Seventy seven oh six, grab that, zero everything out to two hundred and fifty hertz. Okay, clear that space. Okay, now we can save that. So we should have all of these corrections from around here all to about, I mean, maybe here. It may be here, right? Or here. So we'll have all of those corrections in. Um, and this uh, should just roll off really nicely. 
how much resolution we actually have in Odyssey. Let's see. So, um, okay. Might as well reconnect anyway. Okay. Yeah, I mean, look, it's, uh, when you're doing calibrations, there's always uh, something that you can do. It goes wrong. You just have to take a break, maybe for a little bit, or uh, just, uh, you know, try and learn from it. Um, that wasn't on. Okay. Okay. So, subwoofer, target curve now. Let me double check now. Zeroed out, and then we've got all, the, all of this. Okay, perfect, that is the right one. Okay, successful. All right, so that is the correction curve for what we currently have. So, so that, big, uh, that, that big dip or um, rise there, we're, we're correcting for as well. Again, how much resolution we actually have here. Um, I'm not too bothered if there's some things that are not, not perfect. Like, I don't, I don't expect this, right? I don't expect this. One of the reasons I did it on my first calibration was, um, let's see if, because my, my uh, response was tilting down. Uh, Multi-QX calibration, subwoofer one. Okay, um, transfer, yeah, good. So my, my response was e either tipping up or it was tipping down. And I was like, well, with multi-EQX and the target like this, um, what can I correct for? And it corrected for the level, which was great. So from 150 hertz to 23 hertz, it was essentially flat. Um, flat. Uh, within reason, right? So... Um, that was corrected for. Now, now we'll see what uh, what has actually happened here. Um, so, um, now thinking about it, looking at it, looking at it this way, the measuring and the time alignment part, keeping things in twenty four bit forty eight, is a good idea. To be fair, everything after that, when you're actually like kind of EQing and things like that, and you have you are actually having to export like this. Uh, it is better to measure up to 250 hertz. It's just more manageable. It's easier with the with the current method that I'm using. Yeah. So, uh, all right. Now, um, so these are just uh, corrections. Actually, this is the flat. So let's not apply the undo the alignment. So we can compare it to the new version. Um, okay, let's see. Yeah, we'll do 250, um, 1M. Okay, so it has cleaned up this, this this dip that was going on, this rise, this and this. Very minor stuff, right? Uh, let's just remove the old one now. Pretty good. And again, we're we're at the we're at the edge and limitations of Odyssey's own resolution here. And um, but uh, un unquestionably, uh, this is this is better, right? This is better. Uh, this this waviness here as well is is actually better. Now, um, is this completely obsessive? Uh, an OCD? Yeah, sure it is. But look at look at really now though, from sixty hertz to the edge of the performance of our subwoofer, it is essentially perfect, right? Yeah, that is completely flat. So. Um, I'm very happy with this. Um, it just allows things to be tightened up in a much better way. Again, um, if 
you know of a way to uh, import uh, text files to mini DSP? I don't know if you can. And I don't know anything about like FIR filters and things like that and like whether you could do it that way or... So this is, again, this is all, right now, this is all I know how, how to do. And that is, you can make this response better by putting the inverted target curve into uh, Mini uh, Odyssey, uh, multi-EQX. And we're just going to allow it to, and hope that it cor correct as much as it can. Right, it is having uh, limitations here, but it's done a really, really nice job at just giving me a flat line, right? That is, uh, that for me is excellent. And this is again, the most important thing. Uh, time alignment, flat calibration, 250 Hertz flat calibration, right? Um, this is um, 250 Hertz MQX, right? So um, that is a nice, really nice calibration right there. So now we don't want to listen to it like this. Uh, we've removed the room from the equation, number one. Uh, it's just a flat, flat line subwoofer. Like um, that's not going to sound good, right? That's just really not going to sound good. So let's start fixing this and uh, take care of this. So uh, receiver, let's put it back to 120 Hertz. Um, 120, all right, 120. Let's take a measurement because, um, again, for looking back at your, um, if you want to uh, inspect this file, you kind of want to see each part of it. Okay, so that is what a 120 hertz roll off looks like at 120 there. It's normally 5 dB for me. 80, uh, 74, mm. nearly 6 dB. Okay, so in the past it was normally around 5, and it's because the EQ was only so good. Now with the multi EQX coming in and just tightening things up, it's almost allowed me to get a true 6 dB uh, roll off right there. So again, um, just another reason why I, I love that uh, import target curve uh, correction for Odyssey as well. You know, you can use Odyssey and, Mo and uh, Mini DSP here and just get absolutely fabulous results. So, okay, so that is that. Um, so, 120 hertz, uh, hertz applied. And uh, now, let's apply the room curve, 7.4. Double check, 7.4. Okay, um, enable. So, um, with, when I put these types of room curves in, I don't want to be applying positive numbers um, past 80 hertz or 80 hertz and onwards because you can hear it. Um, I, don't I don't like to localize that sound at all. So um, I'm mousing over here. This is probably too small for you to see on YouTube, at least. Um, it's even small for me. I mean, okay. So it's at zero dB at 83 hertz, right? I'm fine with that. That's fine, right? That's 
30 hertz, I'm 7.4. That's exactly where I want to be as well. Um, 31 is 7.3 hertz. That's 31 hertz is 7.3. And we hit our peak at 30 hertz. Um, I want to hit full juice of my subs at 30 hertz. Now, my subs did measure, yes, um, say 25 hertz. This is true. Um, but this is where I've just came in and thought, I realize as well that movies have maximum slam also at 30. Instead of it being 25, I just changed it to 30, right? I want to hit full peak at 30. Um, it does give uh, subs more more juice and more, more deepness, richness to them. Another thing is um, wherever you set this frequency is obviously where where these will uh, intersect, I guess you could say. Um, and I use a Q of 0 0.9. I first started using a Q of 0 0.7. And um, I noticed that uh, if you use a Q of 0 0.7, let's just do it, uh, 0 0.7, uh, 90, uh, 90 hertz, we're still boosting, right? Because the Q is just uh, stretching this out uh, at uh, 30 hertz, we're at 6.4. Well, I want to be at 7.4, right? So this Q for me is, is not good. And I do not want it bleeding into this roll off um, from 80 hertz onwards. It doesn't sound good, and I can localize the bass. So with this gain of 7.4, a Q of 0 0.9, just, I mean, at 82 hertz, we're 0 0.1. That, that's, that's nothing. And uh, I'm reaching my full peak here, uh, 7.4 at 30. So, yeah, that's, um, that's what I've decided on. And uh, the frequency, yeah, 50, because uh, it allows this uh, to happen and keep it within that range where I want to be. This is a low shelf filter. And uh, essentially, this is just now applying the target curve uh, to both of these subs. So let's remeasure this. So now we should have we should have this, but we should also have a gain now coming up here, right? So double check. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so what is this? A seven point uh, four room curve. Okay. So, um, how do you know that's correct? How do I? How do I know uh, that's really? really it um again the way we did it earlier um it matched up to be the same now interestingly if i did that then we're in 120 hertz though so let's grab that yeah let's see how does this how does this room curve balance out when we when we spl align it Should be close. So we do the same thing. That's it. Right. So what what is so what have, what do we achieved here? We've we've we're not we're not reaching absolute max peak of, of this. We're we're hitting about where we want to be. And then it's rolling off rolling off here. We 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 have to correct for this still. 
But um, th all this mess, right? All of this mess. This is a 120 hertz, yeah. Uh, all of the all of this mess is now being corrected for. We've we've applied a room curve that is based on the subwoofer itself, and what is happening, even this even this roll off here, right? Uh, from the original response, it's rolling off in the same way, right? Uh, this is going to sound absolutely incredible in the room. Uh, there's more to do, but it's going to sound absolutely incredible. And again, it's because the target curve is based on what we already have, right? It was, the, the, the target curve was right in front of our face, right? And um, yeah, it's uh, once I kind of figured this out, uh, the room curve and just kind of getting everything set up and now with even Odyssey um, and multi-EQX being able to import, tighten things up. Uh, yeah, the results uh, are spectacular. So um, why I align in this way as well is because when you align in this way, you get to see things in a relative way versus the other what we already have. So as you can see, we're overshooting here. Uh, the purple here is the room curve version, right? One of the reasons it's overshooting is because we're applying um, this boost and um, in in mini DSP, it's, it's allowed to continue, right? Um, this just goes on forever. You know, this goes to, to 10 hertz. This boost continues up to 10 hertz. And um, we, we don't want that. So we now want to cut this off. And um, when you EQ in this way, because you're bringing down the subwoofer's floor closer to this part, um, this is where you can get into seriously crazy, crazy bass. And you have to take care of this because you you could damage your speakers, right? You could honestly damage your speakers if you don't care. Uh, take care of this. Number one, number one goal. My speaker, as original, my subwoofer's original roll off, I must equal exactly the same. Then I know my subs are safe. Um, I don't think these have a built-in. Um, uh, what is it? Where? Um, a safety a safety thing built in where it would cut its own uh it would roll its own sub off to to save it i don't think it has that so the only other way to get around this is to uh, go to mini dsp go to the crossover section now this is one i was using earlier i assume it's going to be correct so we're just going to enable this and you can see now what this does is it it will get to a certain point and just drop the speaker at the highest possible rate uh, Butterworth uh, 48 dB per octave. This is like the highest one. That I just want. I, I want. I don't want anything else coming out of this sub. Subs both, right? So that's applied. And um, now we'll measure again. I'm going to keep the screen here because I'm going to normalize this every single time. I need to know that I'm getting exactly the same performance as the subs. Uh, measured originally right because I, I don't anything else you're out of bounds you, you're gonna push your subs too hard and when you push subs too hard um that and they, that signal does not belong there in your subs it doesn't sound good right i'm doing this to make my subs sound as good as they can um there is a there is a point where look you know uh $1,600 subs, we can only do so much, right? Um, Okay, like I said, we will volume normalize this to make sure that's too much. Okay, so um, 
that was the original room curve. Yeah, this is now too much. So 23 is too much. So 23. No, I don't want that. So um, crossover. 22. And we measure again. Now let's see. Okay, good. Um, we're, we're, we're almost there, right? I think we could, uh, I don't know. I, yeah, this is a little bit of a debate. Do we meet up? Uh, so, negative 7.7. It's more, it's more negative always. Is there ever a point? I might be able to get him away with one more, but that might push it now just over. Um, Again, you might think I'm being a little uh, um, over-cautious here. Maybe I am. But again, I, uh, I'm i not here to... There, there's a sound that a sub makes, and um, when it's too deep, it sounds throttled. Um, this might also take some uh, listening tests, right? Um, the Batman uh, car chase scene with those throaty engine sounds might be worth um, listening to because the for me the EQ's done so this is just kind of like well where where do we roll off um, I might say that 22 might actually be the best let's try a 21 and um, just see what we actually have here looks uh this looks really nice so that's a 21 and again i have all of these measured and set and i will save them right so i can i can look back at this and say mm, yeah i see why 21 is starting to push the speaker right um tw now 22 we are we're over the performance limit of the speaker, right? I know this is very, very small, and this is again going to take a, a listening test. I need to test some some movies. Does it push too hard, right? If if keeping the performance of the subwoofer is uh, the calibrated subwoofer is best inside the performance of the original measurement, which is this one. So this would be inside of the blue measurement. I can see that being the best one, right? Because again, I'm, I'm, I'm not. We're not pushing um, the speaker beyond its capabilities here. Plus, it's, it, it, it just sounds absolutely incredible like this too. Um, I'm honestly going to go with twenty-two. Um, I know some people are probably like, no, 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 go twenty-one, go twenty-one. 
get that like thick base down that, that down that bottom end. Maybe again, listening tests. This is just something. Um, this is literally I can go into Mini DSP and say, "Yeah, I've been listening to 22. There's no issues whatsoever. I'm going to try 21." It will even if I've SPL aligned my um, mains to the subs and things like that. That that tiny change there is not going to change anything, right? In the grand scheme of uh, of of whole volume, right? It's not going to change anything. So um, that is the beauty, really, again about um, having all of this uh, recorded and getting into mini DSP and making changes. And again, if I let's just say I, I worked out in a year's time, oh, this correct this um this room curve that we made here, the math was wrong. It's actually seven point two. Okay, I can just change this to seven point two, right? For whatever reason, it was wrong, right? Um, any other way where you're doing it with EQs and you've now got to completely do it over again. This this EQ that was flat, I you cannot. I don't think you can get that to look any better. No, I don't think anybody could. And actually, that's pretty arrogant to say that. Um, I don't mean it in that way. I don't mean me personally being able to do it. I just mean I don't have the tools right to get this calibration any tighter than um, that flat line uh, wherever it is right my my that flat line right so we have all the tools now in in mini dsp uh to to change to change some things right we can change this curve we can change um the filter uh high pass uh is it the high pass I always get them confused. High pass filter, yeah. Or low, you know, I get them confused. So. Um, now, one thing to think about, if you did change your room um, your room curve to say, let's just say 6.5, because it's got, it's peaking less, you might be able to get away with more roll off, right? So again, this is why balancing SPL balancing it in this way to see that in the, in the grand scheme of things, when the levels are the same, where are we rolling off? Because I before what I was doing was turning up the receiver and saying that volume looks about right. I need to cut here. And it just like it was, it was not a very good way of doing it. When you SPL align in this way, you can you can now see this. Where should I be rolling this uh, rolling this uh, EQ off? This is exactly it, where it meets the performance of the original one. So, all right, let's move on. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm happy with this. Right, this is uh, this is a complete uh, calibration from an EQ point of view. Now, um, now what we have to do is um, volume, volume align to the subs, uh, to the mains, uh, mains to subs. Um, so I'm going to do that now, um, and I will stop the video because um, I want to put my 4K Blu-ray player in the same input as I'm EQing to. I wouldn't say that is a big deal, but I, it's always something I think about. What if one of the um, HDMI's on the back of the Denon measured very slightly differently? So I always EQ on the HDMI input that I use as well. You know, I know, I know it's totally OCD, but um, you know, I don't. I've, I've, I was born in the '80s, right? So I know that. Some things, some people just, it's not that they mess up on or um, it's just anything can affect the things that you do. And I just want to remove any of that, that, hey, there was a bad, hey, one of my cable or DVD inputs, right? It measured differently. But I, you know, you're, so now I'm not measuring for the same input. I don't know. So it's just some things to think about. Probably all of these measure exactly the same. But I'm just removing that um, as any factor at all. So, um, okay. So um, I'm going to get my 
I'm going to put my uh, Panasonic uh, back into the Blu-ray input, and we're going to use Spears and Munsell now to volume a line to the mains. Um, yeah, so I'll be back one sec. Okay, back. Uh, yeah, we've uh, I've everything's uh, plugged in. Uh, HDMI's, uh, Panasonic uh, UB9000 is on. So we're using uh, the Spears and Munsell 4K Ultra HD benchmark disc. Uh, to uh, SPL align essentially uh, the mains to the subwoofer in volume. So um, now you can use uh, spatial audio calibration toolkit as well by uh, Technodad and Joe and Tell. However, uh, with their release, you have to they. They don't account for the pink noise difference in the LFE channel by 10 dB. So if you measure your left speaker with this disc, uh, you measure, say, 75 dB, right? Uh, when you measure the subs, they will measure now 85 dB. And the way I volume a line, um, it is just much easier with Spears and Munsell, right? Um, there are things that you can do in REW, though, to negate uh, this issue and that is measure your sub and then you apply a negative 10 db uh, loss to it in the um, in one of the calculations uh, I forget where it actually is uh, maybe I'll show once once it comes up um, so yeah that's the that's the only that's the only real difference uh, between these two discs I like simplicity and just ease of use and uh, things like that. And I don't want to have to be bothered uh, by that that difference. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, like pink noise uh, for the left channel is like at negative 30 dBFS and pink noise for the subs is negative 40 dBFS, exactly 10 dB lower. So um, yeah, it's just, it's just easier this way so uh, yeah uh, that's what we'll do here um, now one thing I didn't do export is actually save this file so new calibration um, new sub calibration I really should feb yeah, let's do this. Feb 23. New sub cal, Feb 23. All right, so that's saved as well. So just in case some weird things happen, like uh, I don't know if you've had this with Mini DSP before, you can disconnect, reconnect, and it, then it will say, hey, load what was on, on board, and it was, was not this calibration whatsoever. So I've, I've learned the hard way. And I've lost calibrations uh, because of this as well. So as long as you always have a backup now of this. Now, typically what I do as well is I apply it to uh, 2, 3, and 4. And again, thinking about technology and things like that, imagine we had a power cut and when it came back on, for some strange reason, it got set to number 2. Well, number two contains this calibration as well. So that's what I use my other banks fill, uh, save uh, uh, presets for, is to make sure I'm using the correct calibration. So um, I don't put anything extras on these. I use one calibration for music, movies, and everything. There is no different calibration. For me, there's no need. Um, you know... I like one calibration, and once you get it right, you know you've got it right. Um, I shouldn't need some old music, for instance, right? Doesn't have the bass that, say, modern music does. Well, that's the way it sounds, right? That's just the way it is. Some movies, um, Christopher Nolan uses reference bass, right? And old Disney, I, I will say this, old Disney is negative 6 to 8 dB low on the bass, right? Um, unfortunately, that is just the way it is, right? Um, they were using probably some dynamic range compression on their uh, sub-channels. You know, who knows what they were doing. But this way, 
I can tell the difference between good mixes, bad mixes, and movies that really know how to use bass, uh, sound designers that know how to use bass. So I don't want to take away from the original intent of what I listen to, whether it's music or movies. So this is why I, I use one calibration. Um, so that's saved. And uh, yeah, we're going to use this. Okay, so what I do is use an RTA. And uh, I'm actually not going to use that. I'm going to one to one octave smooth. Uh, no, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. It's 148 octave, but the actual smoothing is one to one. Um, one to one is easier to read. And uh, it makes aligning subs to mains incredibly easy. Um, what I like to do with this method, because things are smoothed, you got to think things are actually smoothed. So the peak of, say, a subwoofer, unsmoothed versus, say, smoothed, is different. So what I do is whatever the level I measure the mains at, I increase the subs by plus two because they're smoothed, right? I found that this gives me what I call reference level bass. Um, and it sounds absolutely perfect like this. Now, um, there might be t not enough control on my phone for the subwoofer volumes here. So if that is the case, and I'm being very picky about this, I would go into multi EQX here and lower the volume by say, my last calibration, I lowered the subs by point, point zero, uh, 0 0.2 very small change but it just made it where the volume was perfect and you know that's uh i didn't need to do that but there were certain things that i was just like that i think it just needs a little touch so um yeah now what we do what i do is um spears and munsell uh their uh pink noise is a, is about a minute long you can squeeze about 300 uh, cycles in here. Um, I think it's, uh, I can't remember what they're called. Um, you, but you can squeeze about uh, 300 in there, but that's squeezing. So I just set this to 280 and it stops by itself. The reason I want it to stop by itself is because then I know every channel, I would normally do every channel and they always, they're timed by the same amount. So when it hits 280, uh, it will stop. And um, maybe I could, I mean, I could just move this just so you can see it uh, down, down in this corner, uh, down in the corner there. Um, okay. Okay. Um, and yeah, you can copy these settings. Uh, there was something that somebody asked. So their bars, uh, their, their bars were looking really bad. So um, you can go into the appearance setting and uh, number one, you need to use adjust RTA levels. I think it measures 10 dB more or it might be even 20 dB more or 20 dB less. So when you do this, this is the actual proper levels. Um, uh, so I just have two of these uh, ticked. Um, and these are unchecked and I think they might be by default checked so you might want to just uh, see if the settings are correct okay so I mean look we can just start recording we can do 20 oh where are we okay so that can come off now and yeah this is smoothed and this is just capturing my voice. Uh, these are the averages, right? So we go up to 280 and then it automatically stops. And again, this is to gain consistency from each speaker. Um, the reason I'm doing this is um, I like to start it first and then I just reset. So one other thing I do is I don't necessarily care that I'm at 75 dB exactly. Um, what I care about is just that the receiver is at reference level. 
Um, that's automatically stopped. One second. I've got to see what uh, volume I'm at. I do apologise. Um, okay. Okay. I just have to check that. All right. I'm actually at reference level here. So, um... Restart the track. Okay, why so long? Um, at around 250 to 260 averages, uh, you have collected so much data that uh, things just stop moving, right? And it just locks in uh, that volume. Maybe you could go a hair longer, right? And, uh, and, and guarantee things, but we're using smoothing as well. Um, so this is why like I just like to, I like to get the 280 averages. Um, it, it locks in how much volume we are truly putting out on that channel, right? I do this for all channels, but um, obviously, you know, that's, for, that's another day. I think I might even have gone into this on another video. So press current. Um, God, uh, let's fix this. So um, left. Uh, where do we go? Okay. All right. Uh, left. I mean, to be honest, we don't really even need this page. I think this this one stays up. No, it doesn't. Uh, so. 81. 82, right? So um, if, if it's the 2 dB rule that uh, I was... Uh, so uh, we'd, we'd be 84, right? Um, well, I could be exact. 81.8. Uh, 83.8. Right there. Um, that seems like a lot. I, I don't know if it's just that my scale um, because I think, I think normally I would do like here, right? I just want to make sure I'm over the, uh, but, um, look, let's see. I did say the 2dB. I, th I thought that's what I was doing. Um, around 83.8. Now we can do this here as well. So, uh, roughly 83... Point eight. Now we don't move this. Like we can always see now where we should be in volume in the sub-channel. Um, so I'm going to need my phone because I'm sure we're going to need to increase volume as well. Alright. Not actually far off. Um, yeah, we're still recording. It doesn't matter. Um, not too far off. I am stopping the disc, and the reason is because this app specifically, or I would just say in general, if you're making subwoofer volume changes on a phone that is, and you're not using an analog 
to turn and dial things in yourself. But even that, I think you should turn the subwoofer um, or the, the test tone off just for safety reasons. Um, so let me try setting my subs to 80. Okay, that went in. And uh, let's just get a quick snapshot again. That's too loud. Because uh, if I'm doing the, the true T, uh, you know, the true 2 dB roll, I'm already going over by a dB anyway, so let's pull this down. Okay, that went in. disc stopped there for a second. Um, I'm going to do one more low. 77. Okay, that went in nice. Let's get a full read on this one. So this might be a period of time where you don't hear anything. I hear the subs, but it's not going to pick up on anything. So it might be just, you know, radio silence for a, for a minute. Uh, sorry about that, but I just want to again make sure what I'm doing here is setting the levels correctly. Um, so, That's enough. It's enough. Um, so uh, that one there, that can go. Okay. So where are we? Um, there, there. I like that. I really like that. Um, that to me, that to me is fine. Um, yeah. So we were a little short of our tar of our target of two dB. Uh, this is why. Um, I set my receiver to 0.2. So just one sec. Uh, so let's fix that. So I'm negative 10 right now on the receiver. A 0.2 difference is going to make nothing in the grand scheme of things with clipping. Uh, at least I, when I, I don't think it would. So um, this difference that I need, I'm just, I'm just under. So, um, what did I do? Um, was it 9.98? It can't be. Yeah, I was going to say. That wouldn't work. Like that? 9.9? .9? I think I did a 9.8. Yeah. Yep, let's do that. Uh, that's what I did last time, and uh, it made it so that line was just was perfect. Um, sometimes, if you see me like, kind of like, "Hey, did I do it this way, or did it, did I do it that way last time?" 
some of that is because uh, like when you when you're doing a video like this um, you know it, it's a different environment to like uh, you know real calibration so um, when you are doing it you know by yourself uh, it, you know you really you're in a you're in a relaxed environment so uh, some of the things again you know, like when you do a video you kind of just forget and uh, like the spreadsheet thing that happened to me uh, today it's like all right <laughs> let's stop the video and figure this out before I go further you know um, but um, okay that's it uh, yeah reconnect all right we're good yeah okay so that's sent um, I mean we, we don't need it uh, RTA so we do the same thing again um, you know it doesn't uh, I could do 280 uh, I, I, I feel as though the sub I'm, I kind of know right? it, it, lock, it locks in after you know 20 or 30 cycles really nicely so um, But uh, instead of doing the line here, you could just check uh, the center point at 1K, 81.7. So the center point here, uh, what is the, what's the highest point? It's right there, 83.5. So. If I wanted to be ultra picky here, I'm that like point two away. Uh, yeah, this is. Uh, don't scream at me, but uh, you know, I've got to get it on that line. One or two, though. Again, it's a if this was a real calibration, I'm just checking one, checking another. Once I hit gold, I'm done. Right. You know, that's just um that's just the way it is. Uh it's uh it is a full calibration. So, you know, for me this is part of uh how I do it. Um, so what would, uh, what exactly is 2dB? My math is bad again. Uh, what was it? Uh, so what are we? 80. 817, 82, 83, so 83.7. Uh, we don't need those anymore. Just in case I need it. Okay, that looks as though it's sent. Yep. This can go. RTA. Uh, oh, right. Eighty three seven. Okay, we're going to be right there. 
with this. So, uh... Wrong button. Uh, reset. Track reset. enough I know uh, okay so what do we have here that is the point there for uh, the speaker right there and we have just gone over 2 DB right there uh, that's debatable right uh, you could uh, I, I, I what I want is I definitely want this to be just peeking over this point definitely uh you could do 1 db 2 db i have found that when you get it just like this though and again because it's because it's smoothed um this this just sounds absolutely perfect and um you know we're not we're not 10 db over we're not 5 db over these speakers or anything like that this is just a 2 db uh increase and uh when you have the volume of the sub to your mains, other speakers set like this, it's just amazing bass, right? It really, yeah, it's just incredible bass. You have a calibration done, done like this as well. It's just absolutely excellent bass. So, um, you know, I've, I've heard stories about people running their subs 10 dB hot. Not when it's calibrated like this, you wouldn't want to do that. You know, t 10 dB hot. Like, if you're running your subs 10 dB hot, you'd almost have to have a flat calibration to run them that hot. Uh, I don't know. Like, uh, again, with this EQ, the, this EQ that I just did, there's, there's no way, you know. So I'm, you know, I'm close, right? I, I want to be re very, very close to this so um you know when you put on oppenheimer uh you know if you're 10 db hot good luck um i don't know i just because this sounds like it's got nothing more to give like this is this is it we're, we're on the edge here right so yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't do any more than that um so that's done. So um, save all. Um, mains sub volume balance. Okay, so that's saved as well. So we've got everything is saved so far. I can look back at this and think maybe one dB was a smart choice, right? Um, Two dB is a, is a it, we're pinching a little here, right, on the volume, but uh, I don't think so. I think I think this is fine. Uh, clear them. All right, last thing now. Um, aligning the subs to your mains, right? Now look, I do this with the center channel because the set, I use the center channel as my reference um, speaker and um, all other channels get aligned to that. So um, yeah, that is, I, I think it's the best way. I think the center channel is, is the best channel to use for this. So um, yeah, as long as, again, as long as you align your left and right channels, perfectly or as well as you can to your center channel 
the mains integration is going to be perfect, right? Uh, hopefully. Um, hopefully nothing goes wrong here. So, uh, <laughs> um, all right, let's get going. So my speakers are in small right now. And um, I did say I shouldn't uh, test things on a video. But um, the roll off that gets applied to things like with the LFE channel, like 120 hertz, that uh, phase needs to be taken into consideration as well. Um, because you could, you could phase a line perfectly with your speaker set to large, but because just adding the roll, the, the roll off, the 80 hertz roll off uh, crossover could just affect the, um, the speakers and their timing in a completely like, unforeseen way. Um, so that's the, that's the thought process, right? Um, so that's what I'm going to do now. If it doesn't work, I'm just going to switch to full range, a full range measurement, and then we'll get the timing uh, aligned that way, which is what I've done before. So this is this is kind of a thought that I've I've actually had recently. I think it'd be worth exploring though. So let's just do this. So uh, we're gonna now. Uh, whew, I'm not connected. Uh, how do I want to do this? Okay. Uh, yeah, I forgot I put my 4K Blu-ray player in. Uh, another cut. Just going to put my uh, PC back into the uh, input, into my Blu-ray input, and uh, I'll be back. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, PC is back into the Blu-ray input on the receiver, and we're ready to go. Now, I'm going to use um, Atmos sweeps for this with timing references on them already. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. These were provided by uh, OCA, Obsessive Compulsive Audio File. Uh, that's his YouTube channel. Uh, please check his channel out. Uh, he's got crazy good information on um, subwoofer calibration, uh, home theater calibration, speaker calibration, just everything, right? Uh, really, really good stuff. Uh, but it's extremely complicated, right? It is, um, it is presented in a way uh, in my opinion, is it, it's in, it presented in a way that is uh, for people that already understand uh, calibration, measurements, and audio. So if you can see like his presentation to say my presentation, I try to dumb things down as much as possible. And it's not uh, to appeal to uh, any particular type of audience. It's just I try and make I try, even in my mind, to make things as simple as possible, right? Because they're just more understandable uh, in that way. So at least that's what I try and do. Um, I'm sure there's people watching and thinking, I ain't got a clue what this guy's talking about. So <laughs> uh, I hope that's not the case, but you know. Uh, okay. So yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, let's go from file. Ah. Yeah, 200 faster sweeps are better for phase and timing. Yeah, I've got the wrong file here then, wrong folder. Yeah, it is better uh, to be faster. So I have 1M sweeps here, uh, but we also have 256. So, um, okay. That is, this is a VLC player, and you can, uh, let's do a quick setup. Uh, where do you go? Where do tools, yeah, preferences. Uh, you can see how much I use this. Uh, once it's set up, I kinda, you know. Uh, audio. This should be on. That was there an update? So uh, this should be 100%. Always start. Didn't save it. Okay, there we go. Uh, so yeah, it should be 100%. That should 
it uh, well it, it sh as long as the uh, as long as nothing's clipping in uh, the, anything you're playing you should be completely fine with that uh, so Windows multimedia device output um, HDMI audio pass-through enabled uh, device shouldn't a default should be able to pick up the device you're actually uh, playing it through but I can force my Denon right I just can force this uh, to play through there so you know I'll save that as well uh, yeah so uh, where are we all right so uh, timing uh, let's see if this works. <laughs> so, uh, nearly forgot. We don't want to engage the subs. That's the thing. Uh, so, we we just want the crossover to be in place and to have the subs off. So, we're just going to mute the subs. And we're going to see what happens to timing now. Uh, this is a full range measurement, but we're going to we're going to see what's actually happening with this uh, roll off, and should we do it this way, right? Uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so uh, this is without a sub. Let's double check. Small. Just double check. Small 80 hertz crossover. Okay, so um. To make this easier, let's use smoothing for these measurements. Uh, it makes timing easier to see. One to one actually makes timing super easy to see, but uh, you know, uh, having this level of detail is not necessary. Okay, so uh, uncalibrated speaker, by the way. Um, so. Um, Let's see what's actually happening uh, with a few things. So uh, this is the, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's perfect, right? Because the center speaker is the reference speaker, and that is also the speaker that it's playing from. This should be extremely close uh, from an impulse point of view. Um, so the subs are Odyssey's measurement, so... You know, I don't know how far off we'll be. Uh, so LFE. Subs are off. I better run this again because you never know, they might have slept. So, uh, center. Okay, that's our sub response. Uh, sub, okay. So, center and sub. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I wonder if this crossover point right here would be better. Huh. Because, well, this is with an 80 hertz crossover. So you still have performance to 60. Okay. So uh, let's look... Let's look at alignment tool and see what we actually have here. 
as well. Uh, let's do this instead. Okay. Uh... Just looking at traces just to see like what's going on. Uh, I'm not sure what is going on with this. Compared, look, this is the uh, center speaker red. Uh, All right, let's see what a line phase. I'm not sure. Well, 80 hertz. Let's see. Right there. So we according to the according to the response though a lining phase at cursor that uh, like that we actually lose performance by doing it So um So where it's at is good or that's uh now, like before, could we pick somewhere else and align to that? Ooh, that looks good. But a 12 millisecond delay. That's a lot. 13 feet to achieve that. I don't know. I don't think so. Let's check some other spots. Worst performance. It's actually worse performance than the speaker itself. We can't, you know, you can't have that. So, did Odyssey actually do a really good job here, or just did the stars align? I didn't know that it was going to do this because I changed the, I changed it uh, before. Uh, and yeah, so. Um, Let's just see these traces though, like what? Hmm, it's not better, is it? So let's have a look at impulse and see if uh, there's anything we can do here with impulse instead. So reset. Um. Some might look at this and say, look, that's, uh, somehow this is already aligned perfectly, right? Um, this might be the case, but let's just see if there, if there is anything else that could be done. So uh, with the impulse alignment, we align IRs at cursor here. Uh, yeah, now we need to invert. Ooh, well, actually... Okay, so inverting the polarity from the start doesn't actually increase performance. It makes it worse. So the fact that you would have to invert polarity and then change the delay, I don't like that. Like, So let's choose another one, around uh, 90. That might be a performance increase, but you did invert the polarity. That might be the way to go. Huh. 18 delay though? I don't think I can even do that on the receiver. Eighteen delay. I guess I could put it into the mini DSP as well and delay by that much. Um, so impulse aligning wants me to actually delay by that much um, and invert the polarity. Okay, let's try another one. Ooh, that's good. Wow. 
the, uh, uh, this is new to me. Um, I know this is only for beta people, so like, I, I, th this line does it represent the the best potential? Because uh, once you press it here at seventy, it is crazy good. It, it matches like what is potentially predicted. I, I, I don't know. So. Uh, I'll have to read the beta notes on like what this is. But uh, any case, 12 delay. Okay. I wonder if I could just put this delay in on the uh, Mini DSP and don't have uh, Odyssey de deal with it. So, uh... Uh, 70... Uh, best. 60. And it has to invert. And you lose performance here. So we've gone too far. Reset. 70. I think that's it. But again, um, I have a feeling I've delayed the subs on the receiver by like 18 already. And uh, I think you can only delay up to about 23. So, yeah. But, oh, that gives a really nice response though. That's excellent. 12. So how I would test this um, to see, uh, I would re-measure and see if this is the correct thing uh, to do. Because if I press the same button and I re-measure, this should say roughly zero, right? Um, at least I hope so. I'm going to put it into MIDI DSP. So, uh, 1218. So, uh, delay. 12.18. Right. And, uh, bad with numbers. So, 12. Who's worked it out already? 1.79 1 1.79 right sub delay I've got a save file anyway but uh, so 13 13.97 okay at least it's instant. We can give this a try. So, um... Sub two, we'll call it. I think that's it. Because the, the response is the same as the delay of the first sub. Ah, oh, it, it took it away. So if I press this, it shouldn't do anything? Yeah, point 0.1. Ooh. That's good. Now, uh, again, last time I did this, I did a full range measurement. So I turned the subs off, uh, swept the, the channel, the center channel, uh, then swept the subs. I did it that way. 
um, again, this way I've, the thought process is, is that the crossover is also plying different phase at these points and actually time aligning for that as well. Um, I guess I'll let you know whether it's, uh, it is the right thing to do. Um, but for me, so negative one, so, um, hey, let's just check, right? Now, when you're in, when you're this close, chances are there's going to be run-to-run uh, -run changes. So, some people would be like, "Don't, don't change it," because you know. But uh, for science, uh, let's see. <coughs> Excuse me. Up three. Okay. Alignment. So zero. It's the set, right? It's uh. Okay. I I I, th I think that's close enough, right? Do I? I mean, you, this, you only have to... I'm only going to do this video once, so... Next year I'll find another method. Uh, negative, yeah. Sub three. Ooh. Okay. So we're right on the money. Uh, yeah. We're within point one of one way and point one of another way of being completely impulse aligned at 70, um, which gave us the best response of this rollover from uh, 80 hertz. Uh, you gain more performance. You gain more performance than the original measurement, this, this red measurement here, which you should. Uh, when two speakers are combined in this way. And this is the response that it is actually giving. So I am super happy with that. And um, you can align with impulse or phase, but we, I, just, we, I just got to this uh, point where we went to impulse alignment and impulse alignment gave me the best results, right? So... You, you might be able to get away with it and do it with phase. I might be able to play around with this uh, this file tonight and uh, save this. And oh, I could I, I could have got it aligned with uh, with uh, uh, phase. But this this I mean, when you get impulse aligns like this from both channels, and you just get this performance, I you know why do I do I really want to see if another method works? Uh, I don't know. I just I think this is that that is I think that's excellent. So, um, like I said, maybe maybe tonight I'll play around with um, see if I can get it with uh, with impulse. Oh, sorry, phase. See if I can get that done. Uh, let's save this file. Uh, 
phase and impulse main sub to main. Okay, so that's saved. Uh, again, uh, set, just saving your uh, all of the EQ that you've done from start to finish. Um, from the EQ themselves, from the uh, volume balancing that we did, uh, to the timing that we did. Um, this, again, this is a new uh, thing that I am trying with setting the speaker to small but turning the subs off and then seeing its phase and uh, impulse and how that affects it because that's going to be turned on the phase is going to be the phase alignment is going to be different when the speaker is set to large versus when it's set to small. So if you phase align like this with the speaker set to small and they're and they're in crossover mode of 80 hertz already, and you get this type of response as well, I I, I just think that is the best way to do it. Um, maybe next week I'll uh, not for a video, but I'll play around with. Uh, is that the best way to time a line? I, for just just actually thinking about it, I, I swear that is the best way to do this, um, and it's aligned gorgeously. I mean, wow, that is uh, that's better than I had before. So um, that's amazing. That is absolutely excellent. So uh, yeah. I know it's a long video, uh, but I wanted to put out a video that is an absolute from start to finish full calibration. I'm sorry about the issues with the spreadsheet. I I will have probably edited that out a little um, just to you know, uh, but you know, I, I knew one one or two mistakes are definitely going to make it through the uh, on a video, uh, but. What matters is, is what we were able to achieve in the end. What we're able to achieve in the end is a stunning subwoofer calibration. Uh, let's just check it out. I didn't save it, did I? Oh, I did, thank God. Um, so full sub calibration. Okay. Clear. Okay. Oh, we went with twenty. We went with twenty-two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, time aligned one twenty hertz. There's colors. Let's just give us a color. That's oh, wrong one. That'll do. Yeah, just so you can see it. Yeah. Uh, uh, can, can have you seen a calibration better than this? Not how 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 far this goes on. Like you might have killer subs, right? Right. They they play down to uh, 15 hertz, 10 hertz. I'm not talking. I'm not talking about that. The method, the alignment, the volume balancing. Uh, everything and the actual EQ here as well. It's just I I have this combination of all of the pieces fitting together. I haven't seen a video of of them putting all of these pieces together and getting this response right. Um, if somebody has, please show me the video because um, I'm. I love to watch other people's calibrations and the how other people calibrate a sub. I just I, I like to watch longer videos like this because I can get into the mindset of, oh, this is why they did this. This is why they did that, right? But again, we're not outside the performance of our, of our original sub in any way. Um, at 22 cutoff, right? Uh, high pass filter. It's a gorgeous calibration. And look at what we had to deal with before. It's disgusting, right? 
And as well, these subs have been reviewed by other reviewers and they've said they're bad subs. Well, they, they, they don't sound good, right? But when you put this EQ on them, the only thing I'm restricted by is the power of the subs themselves. And for my room size, I don't think I could get any more. I wouldn't even want to put any more volume on this. Like I listen to Oppenheimer at negative six on my Denon receiver. I listen to Tenor at negative 7.5. And that's loud, right? That's loud. The, the subs are not bottoming out because of this savior here. They're not bottoming out at all. And we have thick, deep bass too. So I am just, I did a calibration last week and I did the alignment point at 50 Hertz. And I'm like, I think I could get a bit more juice out of this by 40. And I think I have this part I'm not so bothered with, right? The performance here versus the performance here. Yeah, sure, we only gain about 0 0.3, 0 0.4 of a dB, but in the maximum area, I think that's more valuable than gaining half a dB here at 80 hertz. That's what I do. So, uh, yeah. Uh, this has been a, a, a long time, right, of... First getting a U-Mic 1, learning how to calibrate, watching um, Home Theatre Guru. Yeah. Home Theatre Guru's videos. Uh, I mean, at this point, he's the godfather of uh, subwoofer calibration on YouTube. Uh, watching his videos, trying to understand it all. Uh, now I'm to the point where, well, I'm making my own target curves. Uh, I'm trying to understand this whole system of sound uh, from speaker calibration to subwoofer calibration. Is there a perfect target curve? You know, all of these questions, no, there isn't. Um, the target curve that you use is native to your room and your speakers. So you cannot borrow a target curve off offline hey, I use a plus six, uh, plus six dB or a plus eight uh, uh, dB target curve. It's not going to be the same in your room at all. Different speakers, different room size. Uh, the speakers are in a different position compared to the guy that had a six dB or a plus eight dB. So all of this has to be done in-house with your microphone, with REW and or any of the tools that you have. Um, it may not be Odyssey. Uh, it may not be a mini DSP. It might be Dirac. I think Dirac may do a lot of that work for you. I'm not sure what you could do here. I'd be shocked in Dirac if you could actually get a response better than this uh, from an EQ smoothness point of view, I'm talking. Multi-EQX multi -EQX by itself cannot do this. It required a mini DSP to get us almost, and then it required multi EQX to get it even better than that. So, tools on top of tools. Luckily, uh, multi EQX sends things to the receiver as an FIR filter, which is, for my understanding, is minimum phase, which means it has almost no effect on timing. That is the beauty about this. You could just apply this uh, minor improvement here and it didn't it doesn't affect the timing so yeah uh, super happy with this and um, I wonder if there's anything else I'll do to change a calibration now in the future like is this the ceiling this is for the subs I have the room the mini DSP, everything. Is this is this the, the best subwoofer calibration that I can get in this room? Right now, I think it is, right? I have never, apart from last week, when I was employing these methods and trying to string it all together, 
this is the best calibration of a sub I've ever done. And it was done recorded, right? I was, I'm recording this uh, for a, a YouTube video. And, uh, you know, it is, like I said, it, it's different. I made mistakes along the line. But in the end, I wanted to make sure that even with all the mistakes, uh, that I got things corrected first and then I started back my video <laughs> and then continued. And now we have this with time alignment, volume aligned, everything. Now you watch Oppenheimer and now tell me that disc is not a reference disc with the amount of bass, the sound, everything in that movie. Uh, put Tenor on the, I think it's chapter 13, the war scene at the end. And she uh, gets on a speedboat and goes to the main ship. Killer bass, absolutely killer bass. Um, the Batman uh, car chase scene at, n at night when it's raining disturbingly good bass those engine growls insane dune the worm attack uh just uh and when they're speaking um the reverend mother is like you know get over here and all of this type of stuff i mean it is it is scary it's scary bass right subs aren't bottoming out we're 10 db low on the receiver anyway uh, the EQ, most of it, most of the EQ was using negative numbers. We only had to correct what we was uh, uh, bringing down and things that are bringing things down, things, uh, things down too much. Um, uh, I have checked the levels on Tenet. Tenet is my reference disc for a subwoofer calibration because that is the disc... Uh, the 4K disc that I found that the, the receiver clips at. Once I changed the volume on the receiver of the subwoofer channel, recalibrated everything, nothing clipped. Uh, I checked the levels as well on the Mini DSP. You can check the gain levels on the Mini DSP, the input and the output. It gets up to around negative eight, right? Zero is is full, full peak. So. Uh, negative eight, it's close, but we're not clipping, right? The input as well from the receiver to the mini DSP, it's not causing these to clip. So we are, I wouldn't say we're far away from clipping, but tenor is the loudest bass. Yeah, it might be the, the strongest and the loudest bass uh, for that particular part that my room will ever get to. So if I'm not clipping there, I don't see any other movie that would cause that to clip. Oppenheimer pushes hard. Well, very hard. Um, Interstellar is another one that is crazy base. Um, Hacksaw Ridge is insane. With this, with this calibration, the Hexor Ridge is unreal. It's what some of the best bass I've ever heard. It's just deep enough. It is juicy bass, and it sh it just it's, it's thunderous. When they go over the top uh, for the first time, and uh, just before that, they send the cannons, the cannons over. <sighs> That's nuts. Absolutely nuts bass. So yeah. I really appreciate you watching. I apologize that it was this long. I hope uh, hope that if you're into subwoofer calibration and home theater and tuning a subwoofer, I hope you got something out of this. Um, this is, like I said, this has been for years of putting all of the pieces of the puzzle together to finally get this, right? To finally get this response on a sub. So, yeah, lots of little things. How do you how do you align, volume align? Um, Fifty hertz, one octave. It gives you a, the the perfect ballot. You know, there's just there was so much, and I'm glad I didn't forget it. So, uh, uh, yeah, I'm the end of video now. I appreciate you watching. Uh, comments, please. Uh, 
try this method. Um, if I'd love to see you try this method, uh, maybe even combined with some of the knowledge you've gained elsewhere, things like that. Tell me what you think. Um, I'm like over the moon, you know. I've took the subs that I was thinking about replacing to a new level, right? It's to the point where I'm like, these, these are tuned so well, these subs right now, like this. I'm not considering getting another sub anymore. Um, I'm actually thinking about getting a third sub of this one, maybe stick it in the back uh, to just to, but again, uh, maybe just to maybe even give me more headroom in the, uh, on the subs themselves. Are they getting pushed, drived just to that edge? Adding another sub would just take that heat down a little, uh, give you more consistency of, uh, base. Uh, I don't know if you'd actually get better response than this. Uh, using a third, that it's potential you could, because uh, there's more supporting base. Um, it might even clear up this too, this issue that we had here uh, in the middle. So, all right, enough chat. Appreciate you watching. Let me know what you think, and uh, have a great day. Bye.